Welcome to Primary today. We're going to start off with an opening song. Today we will be going over Doctrine and Covenants 37 through 40, which is summed up in this video. Imagine you're sitting in a conference and the prophet tells you to sell everything and move. Pretty shocking, right? Well, it's now January 1831 in Fayette, and the members are at a church conference when Joseph drops a bombshell. He tells them he's just received a revelation that all members of the church in Fayette, Palmyra, Harmony, and Colesville need to sell their homes and farms and move to Kirtland, Ohio. the Lord asking all of the saints to move to Ohio? Well, he gives them a few reasons. First, the Lord is starting to gather his covenant people. Yep, part of the gathering of Israel. Second, he promises that it's there he'll give them his law and endow them with power from on high. They don't know it yet, but the Lord will have them build his first temple in this age, where he and angels will come and restore keys and give them many blessings. And the third reason the Lord gives them for moving is to escape the power of their enemies. <laughs> Since the Lord knows everyone's thoughts, he knows there are some bad dudes thinking of doing some bad things. So, yep, it's time to move. Now, imagine you're playing a friendly game of Monopoly with your family. You have all the best properties and are totally dominating the game. Woohoo! But then you draw a strange card telling you to sell all of your properties for a tenth of what they're worth and to start over with no properties. Oh, this isn't fun anymore. And that's kind of what these saints were asked to do. But it wasn't a game. 
and most of them couldn't get much for their properties because who wants to buy a farm in the middle of a frozen winter, right? The Lord directs, They that have farms that cannot be sold, let them be left or rented. And so many lose their money and have to rely heavily on the Lord's promises. This takes a lot of faith and courage, like really, really a lot. The Lord is asking them to leave ASAP and go several days journey away to the Ohio. It doesn't make sense to them. But even today, God gives commandments to do things that sometimes don't make sense to us. And just like these early saints, we get to learn to trust that He knows why, even if we don't. The Lord promises He will watch over them and be in their midst and give them greater riches, even a land of promise, a land flowing with milk and honey. Hmm, now that may sound kind of sticky, but it's referring to the Old Testament land of promise. And I don't know, they must have really loved milk and honey. Regardless, it's a place to live in freedom and peace. Okay, while several groups prepare for the move, Joseph's mother, Lucy Mack Smith, is charged with leading a group of about 80 people from New York to Ohio. In those days, it was rare to put a woman in charge of such a big task, and at 55, she's not exactly a spring chicken. But with her inspiring faith and tenacity, she is more than up to the challenge. As they start traveling by boat on the Erie Canal, they face hunger, cold, and complaining. But she takes care of their needs and leads them daily in prayers and lots of singing. But as soon as the canal ends in Buffalo, they need to switch to a steamboat to cross Lake Erie. However, ice nearly 22 feet thick blocks the harbors and everyone is stuck. No! They soon find the Colesville Saints and another group led by Thomas B. Marsh stranded and suffering on the dock. Lucy, can you explain to me what we're gonna do? These groups are waiting for the ice to break, which could take weeks. But Mother Smith, not liking that plan, finds another steamboat for her group to stay on while they wait. Unfortunately, the boat doesn't have room for the other groups, and her group can only fit on the deck in the cold and rain. But it's still something. She encourages them to sing, pray, and exercise their faith. After a few days, she questions her group of saints on the boat. Where is your faith? Where is your confidence in God? If you will, raise your desires to heaven that the ice may be broken up, and we will be set at liberty, as sure as the Lord lives. It will be done. At that very moment, there's a noise like bursting thunder, and the ice in the harbor splits just wide enough for their boat to squeeze through, and the captain quickly guns the engine. As soon as Lucy's steamboat gets through, the ice immediately closes behind them, preventing any other boats from making it through. Everyone on the dock simply watches in amazement. Oh, to have faith like Mother Smith. Meanwhile, shortly before Joseph Smith leaves for Kirtland, a Methodist minister by the name of James Coville desires to follow the saints and receive a revelation from the Lord. This beautiful revelation in section 39 promises Mr. Coville amazing blessings, and he is on fire, ready to make covenants and be baptized. But the very next day, Coville disappears. Confused, Joseph asks the Lord what happened, and the Lord tells him Mr. Coville had received the word with gladness, but temptation and the cares of the world caused him to flee. He was like the seed that fell among thorns. Now, compare James Coville's response to other new converts who were willing to pick up and move once they were converted. Sometimes the Lord asks a lot of us, but his promised blessings of exaltation and eternal life are worth it. And it's our choice whether we're faithful and strong like a Mother Smith or wishy-washy like a James Coville. You know, sometimes we feel the Spirit so strongly in a meeting, inspiring us to do something amazing, but by the time we get home and changed into our comfy clothes, all inspiration's gone. The Spirit is strong, but the flesh is weak. Yeah, some call that post-illumination affliction. Sticking close to the Master is the remedy. Now, with the saints heading to the Ohio, we'll learn next time about the Lord's Law and instructions for happiness. Thanks for watching. 
If you feel like this video has helped you on your path towards truth and Christian discipleship, share it and subscribe to the channel. And click on the little alarm bell to get notified when new videos come out. Most importantly, go study the scriptures for yourself. We can love others. The Lord wanted the saints to gather together in Ohio and to love each other as equals. God wants us to learn how to love and get along with each other. Let's think of ideas of how we can show love for others. How about if someone falls down? You could go and help them up and see if they're okay. What about if someone's sick? Maybe you could send them a card or ask your mom if you could take some food to them. How about if you know someone who is elderly or is hurt and they can't take care of their yard? Maybe you could rake leaves for them or shovel their driveway of snow in the winter time. What about if another child, either a sibling or a friend, wants to play? What could you do? You could share your toys and be nice. Or if you're in school or primary, you could tell your primary teachers or your school teachers how much you appreciate them and how gl glad you are that you have them. You could do the same thing for your parents. You could tell them you love them and you could be obedient when they ask you for something. There's lots of ways to help out as you'll see in this next video. Friends, A Sweet Melody by Sarah Cutler, based on a true story. Love one another as Jesus loves you, children's songbook, pages 78 through 79. Jordan is two, Melody is four. One day, little Jordan ran into the door. Ouch! It is okay, Jordan. You don't need to cry. Sit here in my lap, and I will wipe your eyes. Sob. You should now go rest after that big smack. You're too upset to walk. Then climb onto my back. Wow, you are heavy, but I don't even mind. I'll sing, I'm trying to be like Jesus, and so I will be kind. If we are prepared, we need not fear. One way that Heavenly Father helps us not be afraid is by teaching us to be prepared. Where we live, the electricity goes out a lot. And what we do to be prepared is we have lots of candles and lanterns all over the house ready so that when the electricity goes out, 
we just walk over and light all the candles and lights so that our house isn't dark and that we are prepared and not afraid. And now when the electricity goes out, it's actually kind of fun. Think of things Heavenly Father wants you to be prepared for, such as being baptized or going to the temple. Let's think about ways that we can prepare for those things. Keeping God's commandments and learning more about His gospel is the number one way you can prepare for being baptized and going to the temple. If you want to learn in more detail about how to prepare to go to the temple or how to prepare to be baptized, I have a video for each one on my YouTube channel that you can click on and watch. Chase and Taylor are extremely motivated. They work with their passion and intensity, uh, unlike anyone I've seen. Being a successful athlete in high school isn't, isn't the easiest thing. It takes a lot of hard work and dedication. Um, it takes a lot of commitment. You have to keep striving. You have to have a desire, a personal desire, and that burning within you to try and be the best you can be. You gotta take it a day at a time. You can't be where you want to be in one day. You're not gonna go do a curl and have a 20 inch bicep. <laughs> You can't do it on game day. You gotta do it months and years before. Some of the challenge I see with the youth today are um, taking the easy way, going with the flow, going with the peer pressure. It's easy to party, but it's, it's not easy to stay clean, to get on your knees every night and bow your head before your maker and say your prayers. And it's not easy to open those scriptures up when you're tired and you wanna go to bed and you got school at 6 a.m. the next morning. It's not easy to do those things. But those are the things of eternal value. Anyone can do something when it's easy. You know, you're gonna have good days and you're gonna have bad. There are gonna be days where you can't get through the workout without having to throw up. And there are gonna have days where you're feeling like Hercules. Um, and I think that's the same thing with scripture study. There's no time to relax. You have to continually strive to get better and to fortify yourself spiritually, get yourself spiritually for when the opponent comes on, on Friday night, when Satan comes and tries to tempt you and test your testimony, you have to be ready to, uh, you have to be prepared for those things to uh, be able to excel on game day and in life. You got all your, your buddies to your left and to your right and you owe them the, uh, the respect and the privilege that you're gonna leave it all out there. So win or lose, if we lose the game, I can look at him in his eye and tell him that, you know, I gave everything I, I could, you know? There are going to be days where you're dragging. You're not always going to feel like so spiritual and you feel like you're just uh, on fire spiritually. There are going to be days where it's a struggle and it's a drag, but it's days like that where you still do it, where your testimony really comes from, is where your devotion and dedication really comes from. The Savior gave everything to me. He gave his life for me. And when I get back to his kingdom someday, which I hope I can, I want to be able to look him in the eye and tell him, man, I gave you everything I had. I really did, um, just like you gave me everything you had. Um, and I guess that's where I find the drive to do those things. After we are baptized, we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost when we are confirmed. In Doctrine and Covenants 39 verse 6 it says, And this is my gospel repentance and baptism by water, and then cometh the baptism of fire and the Holy Ghost, even the Comforter, which showeth all things and teacheth the peaceable things of the kingdom. Now the Holy Ghost is not an actual fire, but the next story that I'm going to read will describe a little bit more about what the Holy Ghost is like. The Holy Ghost is like a blanket. by Annalisa Hall, illustrated by Corey Egbert. Who is the Holy Ghost? What is he like? He is a member of the Godhead. The Holy Ghost is like a dove. A dove is gentle and rests in peaceful places. 
The still small voice of the Holy Ghost is gentle and quiet too. The Holy Ghost will descend slowly while you are reverent and peaceful. He is like a dove. What else? The Holy Ghost is like the wind. You can feel and hear the wind's power, but like the Holy Ghost, you cannot see the wind as it whispers and whistles. You can feel the Holy Ghost in your heart as he warns you of danger and helps you choose the right. He is like the wind. What else? The Holy Ghost is like glasses. When someone cannot see well, things are fuzzy and confusing. Like a pair of glasses, the Holy Ghost helps you see things clearly so you can make good choices. He is like glasses. What else? The Holy Ghost is like a book. A book uses words and pictures to teach. When you ask for help, the Holy Ghost helps you remember what to say and do. The Holy Ghost teaches truth anytime and anywhere. Most important, he testifies of Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. He is like a book. What else? The Holy Ghost is like a flashlight. A flashlight shines brightly in the darkness. The Holy Ghost fills darkness with light. He brightens your heart and mind. The light of the Holy Ghost shines best when you choose to live the gospel. He is like a flashlight. What else? The Holy Ghost is like a hug. A hug is friendly, kind, and loving. The Holy Ghost can be your friend as you are kind to others. The warm friendship of the Holy Ghost makes you happy. He is like a hug. What else? The Holy Ghost is like a star. A star is steady, is always there, and leads you on the right path. The Holy Ghost hopes you will seek His help. He is ready to guide you back to Heavenly Father. He is like a star. What else? The Holy Ghost is like a rose. A rose is beautiful, but the thorns prick you if you hold it wrong. The little prick from the Holy Ghost reminds you to do the right thing. He pricks your heart to know to say, I'm sorry, and to forgive others. The beauty of the Holy Ghost heals pain and sorrow. He is like a rose. What else? The Holy Ghost is like a seashell. When you put a seashell next to your ear, you can hear a light humming. The different whispers of the Holy Ghost speak to your heart, mind, and soul. If you're not paying attention, you cannot hear what the Holy Ghost has to say to you. He is like a seashell. What else? The Holy Ghost is like a train. A train carries things and travels great distances. The Holy Ghost is a vehicle of revelation. He carries messages to you from Heavenly Father. He brings good people into your life. He travels with you. He is like a train. What else? The Holy Ghost is like an umbrella. The umbrella shields you from the storm. Like the umbrella, the Holy Ghost gives you courage and confidence to go forward. By obedience to the Holy Ghost promptings, you are safe and secure. He's like an umbrella. What else? The Holy Ghost is like a blanket. He is a special gift from Heavenly Father to comfort you. The Holy Ghost wraps you in a warm and comforting feeling when you are sad or need a friend. The Holy Ghost is like a blanket of comfort for me. The end. God gathers us to bless us. Gathering in Ohio was a great sacrifice for many of the early saints. Today, we are not commanded to gather in one location, but we do gather as families, wards, and stakes. It says welcome on here, and here, and on our chapels everywhere. And we mean it. Come sit with us. Come stand with us. Come celebrate and serve, and love, and learn, and love some more. Welcome to a community where we think of each other as family, and act like we actually are. Because that's what Jesus taught, to love one another, to bear each other's burdens, and to try every day to be a little bit better, a little bit kinder, a little more welcoming, because that's what Jesus taught. 
He can make you a better person, and you can make us a better church. God wants his people to be united. To prepare the saints to gather, the Lord taught them to see each other as equals and to be one. In Doctrine and Covenants 38 verse 24 it says, And let every man esteem his brother as himself, and practice virtue and holiness before me. <clears throat> Let's think of some situations where someone might feel left out, like maybe being a new member of the church, or moving to a new neighborhood or school. How should we treat someone in these circumstances? We should be nice and go talk to them, get to know their name and what they like. We should learn all about them and help them feel comfortable. There's lots of things that can become combined or united to become something better, like pieces of cloth that make one quilt, or ingredients that make one loaf of bread. These examples teach us that when we work together in God's kingdom, we can become united and one to make something much better than our individual pieces alone. In the beginning, God made heaven and earth, light and dark, man and woman. He made everything different. No two fingerprints are alike. No two people are the same. We look different. We sound different. We act different. We believe different. But we can be different and still be together. We can be kind. We can be patient. We can not judge. We can forgive over and over again because we don't have to be the same to be one. We are all God's children. We can keep our promises. James Covell had made a promise to obey the Lord, but he did not keep his promise. In Doctrine and Covenants 40 verse 2 it says, And he received the word with gladness, but straightway Satan tempted him. And the fear of persecution and the cares of the world caused him to reject the word. Even though there are many temptations in life, we can know that we will always be able to turn to Heavenly Father for help and to overcome these things through our Savior Jesus Christ. This next video is from the Martinez Church of Christ YouTube channel. A better way to resist temptation. It's hard to tell yourself no. Being a Christian should be a happy thing, but sometimes it feels like walking past mountains of cookies while you're on a diet. The good news about becoming a Christian is that God forgives our sins, pride, anger, worry, lust, greed, envy. The bad news is, buy one, get one free, anger, greed, 50% off, lust, envy, worry, pride. We're still surrounded by sin sinful temptations. Living a Christian life is not just about saying no. Instead, It's about a change of focus. Love, joy, peace, patience. Let's look up instead of down. As a wrapping up of this week's lesson, I invite each of you to discuss with your parents or other family members how you can become more united as a family.
And that concludes this week's lesson. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Our closing song is I Feel My Savior's Love from the Come Follow Me Music 2020 YouTube channel. Thank you.